C.M. Christensen departed from his wife Anna for a mission in Denmark soon after his son, Marcus Joy Christensen, was born. During C.N.'s mission, Anna wrote numerous letters to her dear husband about her love for the joy in her life. One, One letter, letter from, from March, March 10, 1901 reads, While I write to you, I hear my little one talk to Grandma, who has taken him to be with her, and he says, Where is Mama? The little voice sounds so sweet to me that I feel like I was not worthy of such a precious little soul. And I pray within my heart that he will not, not depart there from when he is old. And how I wish I could set a worthy example for him to pattern after one that I would not be ashamed of. C.N. and Anna's first two children were stillborn. And while they did not know it, the birth of the next child after Joy would take Anna's life. She did not live to see it for the example she had set would follow him as he got older. Edith Rushton, CN's next wife, saw the results of what Anna began. In addition, she continued mothering Joy along with the six more children she and CN had. Joy stated about Edith, I liked her more than she knew, I think, and maybe vice versa. Mother Edith asked me when she came home with Dad if I would rather call her Aunt Edith or Mother. I chose Mother, and I believe wisely. Young Mother Anna wrote to her husband detailing the many milestones of baby Joy. One of the first was of Joy eating. His grandmother, Anna's mom, would feed him bread and gravy. Anna, Anna declared, declared, He likes that better than anything else. Later, an organized Edith cooked meals for the large Christensen household. Joyce said he learned to clean, do laundry, and a little cooking and candy from her. She served whole wheat bread with every meal. On Saturdays there was baked beans, and Sunday meals were his favorite. As the baby boy got older, his mother continued teaching him new words, how to talk and how to write. Anna sent a letter to see and display Joy's fine penmanship. He continued learning and was enrolled in school. Joy somehow always seemed to be the, in the unruly class. He discussed a new teacher with his mother, and Edith asked, Is she kind of old with eyelids that come way down on her eyes? Joy asked how she knew, and she told him she had had the same teacher. Edith encouraged education in many ways. For example, it was an unwritten rule in her home that if you were reading a book, everybody left you alone. It was not at school, but at home, where Joy learned a little Danish along with his English. Anna and her mother taught the baby to say, Papa, bye bye, and later, Danish words. She, she wrote, wrote, Our boy runs to the door and says, Gouda, Gouda, to everyone that talks Danish as they go by. He knows when they talk Danish. He never says it to other people. Both his grandparents and many of those around him in Brigham City understood Danish. It surprised Joy when a man spoke Danish to his mother Edith, and she became upset when she did not know what he said. Joy's behavior, both at home and with his classmates, was lively. Anna, Anna wrote, wrote, While I have been writing, Baby has been throwing an apple across the table and picking it up and throwing it again. So you see, he is up to all kinds of mischief. And I have to have a good deal of patience to put up with his capers. Edith had to contend with Joyce's misbehavior at school, at home, and his constant good-natured fights with his cousins. He even broke her special plate, throwing the ball in the house with his dad. Beyond ball throwing, Joy also liked to dance and put on a show for those around him. Anna, Anna explained, explained to her, her husband, husband, We are all well around here. And baby wants to dance, ring around a rosy, all the time. In a later letter, she further talked about his personality in entertaining others. As Joy got older, he used his talents in theater. Edith enjoyed cultural activities, with Sien would attend plays at the Salt Lake Theater and the University of Utah, especially when Joy was in them. Both Anna and Edith were terrified by almost fatal accidents involving Joy. In, in a letter, letter to CN, CN Anna, Anna recounted, the, recounted story. the story. The other day I was coming down to help your mother pick berries, and when I came to the bridge up by the Larsons, I tipped the baby in the ditch. 
and the buggy on top of him, and the ditch was full of water. He was strangling. I was frightened almost to death, but I screamed, and Morgans came over to help me. I got the baby out before he came, and he was all right. Joy's brother Max recalled how upset Edith was when Joy almost died of gas asphyxiation while his parents were out. She worried about her children and hesitated to leave them alone after that harrowing incident. Joy had two caring mothers. Their love forged in his soul the love that he would share with others throughout his life. And cut.